I was told that he was playing in a place called the Cavern. It was an old wine cellar that had been turned into a sort of lunch club. It was Brian that went there, and he was only at the back of the hall listening to those four boys. But whatever he saw, he saw that little spark. And he went right round and offered himself as their manager. Uh, I was immediately struck by their, their, their music, their beat, and uh, their sense of humour, actually, on stage. And even afterwards, when I met them, I was struck again by their personal charm. And uh, it was there that, really, it all started. It took about eight months to um, get to the stage where we had a recording contract and we were having um, the first record issued. That was lovely to do. Love, love. I think it was a very fortunate coming together that um, we seemed to hit it off very well. And when we were in the studio, we did really uh, collaborate as a team. There weren't any egos protruding through. Um, but I was very, very lucky to have met up with them. George had done uh, no rock and roll when we met him, and we'd never been in the studio. So we did a lot of learning together. He had a very great musical knowledge and background. So he could translate for us and suggest a lot of things, which he did, and he'd come up with amazing technical things. When the Beatles were depressed, thinking the group was going nowhere and this is a shitty deal and we're in a shitty dressing room, I say, where are we going, fellas? And they'd go, to the top, Johnny. And I'd say, where's that, fellas? And they say, to the topmost of the poppermost. And I'd say, right. And we'd all sort of cheer up. When I was a Beatle, I thought we were the best fucking group in the goddamn world. And believing that is what made us what we were. Just a matter of time before everybody else caught on. Thank you. For our last number, I'd like to ask your help. Would the people in the cheaper seats clap your hands? <laughs> 